Thanks, Alex. Um, so today I'm going to introduce some preliminary results of the why well, it's auto changing of the um, Apollo 17 core sample 73001. So we just finished the measurement of the last pass uh, last month. So uh, as you've seen this pretty picture from Chip's slide, uh, 73001 was sampled uh, at the station three, and it's the lower part of this double drive tube. And it sampled the uh, light mantle um, on, on station three, and it has um, been su suggested that this core might have penetrated the light mantle, but did it? We'll see. So similar to what they've done, the curator have done to uh, the last core, 73002. For this core, um, the curators uh, dissected this whole core to three passes, as you can see from the picture on the left. And um, on the right, I have the images of the three passes. And uh, for pass one and two, you might be able to see some little chunks of rocks on the core. But for the last pass, um, they take out all the rocks uh, from the core and you can see some of the freshly made um, man-made uh, craters, which is only one month old on the core. So we were measuring the core with a multiband spectrometer and uh, the spectrometer is a very lightweighted uh, instrument uh, that includes a camera, a filter wheel and lens and uh, light. On the left, you can see this um, image of the instrument sitting on the glove box and looking at the core. This is when the room light is on. When we're actually me measuring the core, um, the room light has to be turned off. So the whole core lab at the Johnson Space Center was really, really dark. And we are measuring the core at six wavelengths. Uh, varying from 450 nanometers to uh, 990 nanometers. And these wavelengths are overlapping with the Clementine UV visible camera and the Kaguya multiband imager. And in the next few slides, I'm gonna show you some of the spectral imaging results. Uh, so here are the images of the three passes. And, and on the left, you can see is the uh, 750 nanometer reflectance. And on the uh, right is the uh, RGB false color image. And the red channel is uh, the ratio of 750 versus 415 nanometers. Uh, I don't know if you can see this very slight trend, but the top of the core is brighter than the bottom of the core. And also um, from top to bottom, the red trend is increasing. It might be not obvious from here, so let's see the OMAT map, which I produced with the um, color ratio method. And you can also see this very slight trend. Um, the OMAT get a lower value, which means the maturity is increasing from top to bottom of the core. And if you look at the profile, this might be clearer. There's a very slight trend that the top is less mature than the bottom of the core. We'll go back to this problem later. Um, and also calculated the iron and titanium abundances of the core. So orally, if you ignore those uh, um, very high values caused by shadows, um, the whole core is, has an iron abundance of about seven to eight weight percent, and it's pretty homogeneous along the whole core. And similarly, the titanium is very homogeneous too. And those super high values are caused by shadows. Um, and the amount, the uh, content is about 1.5 weight percent. Except for that, we observed a little alien on the deranded uh, pass. The deranded pass is before pass one. They, they removed this um, sample that it's in touch with the tube. Um, so this is a very black cloud on the deranded pass and it went away on pass one but accidentally fall on pass one. So we got the spectra um, very fortunately. Um, so we plot the spectra with uh, red crosses uh, on this figure on the right. And we also plotted with um, the spectra of Apollo 17 black bees, Apollo 17 orange glass and Apollo 15 uh, green glass. And you can see this black cloud has very consistent spectra 
to the Apollo 17 black beads, uh, which is from 74001. Uh, this core was also a double drive tube, the lower part of the double drive, double drive tube at station four at Shorty Crater. And it sampled about 68 centimeters in depth and it's sampling the dark mantling material. And the spectrum is dominated by abundant ilmenite. So uh, for the 73301 black cloud, it sampled about 40 centimeters in depth. Is there a fangrand ilmenite? Um, I guess we have to wait for the um, petrology analysis to answer this question. But from our spectra, uh, it's similar to the uh, um, black bees from Apollo 17. And uh, I have major two, uh, two major taken away uh, messages. So one is that the whole core has uh, increasing maturity from top to bottom of the core. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, is that the increased maturity caused by mixing of the old and the new uh, avalanches? Um, like what was suggested by uh, Jack Schmidt is like, you can see this light shaded old light mantle and the brighter shaded uh, young light mantle. Is there a mixture happening? Or it's actually a mixture of the landslide and the dark mantling material below the landslide. That, which means this core sampled um, almost reached the edge of the um, light mantle and the dark mantling uh, deposit material on the bottom. And also um, we found the presence of the glassy black clot. Um, how did this black clot get into the core and sit there like it's all surrounded by this super light uh, colored material. It's very special in there. Um, so what we were thinking that can be um, multiple solutions or answers. Um, uh, one is it might be swept up during the uh, uh, avalanche um, process. Uh, it was like um, minding its own business and sitting on the um, the valley and then it just got swept up in the uh, upper position. Uh, or it's a, it's like a ballistic ejecta projectile from Shorty Crater and shoot into the dirt um, at the station three. Um, we don't know yet, but we are looking forward to use the uh, combine the remote sensing images uh, to seeking the answer of this. And also we are looking forward to um, more results from um, further analysis of the samples. Um, thank you. Okay, so we actually have time for questions. Um, come to the microphone or type it into the chat. I haven't seen anything there yet, but please come forward if you have one. Give you a minute. There is one in the audience. Sure, this, whoops, no, I'm, okay. Very interesting. Um, I'm fascinated by your black clod. Mm -hmm. um, and I should know this, but I haven't thought about it for years. What's the estimation of the thickness of the light mantle itself? Um, is that a meter or hundreds of meters uh, in particular? you raise a really interesting question, how that clod, which clearly is linked to the pyroclastic material, got into the middle of this. Yeah. So, so the thickness of the light mantle is key here in terms yes. of your alternatives. Do you know anything about that? Or does anybody here know about that? <laughs> See, if the whole core of the 73, the other one and two, the double drive tube, it sampled about 60 to 70 centimeters in depth. See, if the lower part of the core has mixture of the black um, dark mantling material, it means it reached the edge of the light mantle and the lower um, the substrate dark mantling stuff. That means the depth is around that much, like 60 to 70 centimeters, but maybe much deeper, a little bit deeper. 